is on mine, guys, uh, is Rashi Thomas, who is the founder and CEO of Sprinkler. And we'll get into what Sprinkler is in just a minute. But, Rashi, maybe you could uh, give us uh, some background. What did you do before this? How did you get into this whole world? Um, yeah, so thank you, Shell and Emil. Um, thank you for the opportunity here. Um, before I got started with Sprinkler in 2009, I used to uh, be the president of a company called Epsilon Interactive. At that point, uh, back in 2008, I think arguably Epsilon Interactive was the world's largest email marketing company. Um, so I had the privilege of um, building that organization and running it. Uh, we had about 500 clients around the world in 11 countries. And we were primarily handling all outbound and inbound commercial email for all those clients. And our clients included companies like Citibank and Capital One and Bank of New York and Walmart, Target, Expedia. Um, Groups of names that were using email as a way to connect to their audience. Great. And you've uh, started Sprinkler since then, and it was Carlos Dominguez uh, over in the office of the CEO at Cisco Systems who suggested that we should talk, uh, and uh, you very graciously gave me a, a, a product tour. Uh, but could you start off by describing what Sprinkler is? Sprinkler is an enterprise social relationship management platform uh, that we offer to large companies who have distributed needs in managing their social audience and communication with them. Um, and if I tie it back to my, my background, uh, in 2008, my company sent out 43 billion emails on behalf of my clients. And when you send that kind of volume, you understand the limitations that as a channel in post. Um, social media is email to the wall. Uh, email got basic issue. Um, the recipient does not control who sends an email to them. As a result, we had spam and there was no way to control it. 95% of commercial email is irrelevant after six hours, to 72 hours. The coupon to get breaking news from Washington News in the post, not relevant after 72 hours. And email is not social. So I saw our clients use email, send out hundreds of millions of emails, and I was looking for ways to make email better. And when I saw Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, I didn't see LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. I saw the next generation of electronic communication that solved the basic problems that email has. If you look at all these channels, you're going to realize that they basically have the recipient controlling permission. So you subscribe, you thank someone, you follow someone. Without that, it beats you. Number two, there's a concept of a stream that is seen. That doesn't cost you three seconds to go read and delete. And then there's a private inbox. Twitter is called direct messages. Facebook is called your messages, your inbox. And then the medium is social. It's just the framework had evolved. And so what I set out to do was what we had done. This is the third startup story that no part of. Um, what we set out to do was kind of for large companies who are managing hundreds of Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube accounts, sometimes in 60 countries, it's up to 120 plus countries, and help them start seeing their social audience and start, start seeing the social database and then start using, being able to use social as a channel to connect and drive business goals and deal with this inbound competition. So, interesting to listen to how you describe that, Rashi, because what popped into my mind was thinking, just to, I guess, to understand where Sprinkler sits in a market uh, you, of services or products that people already know about. So, would it be fair to say that you're, uh, for want of a better way of putting it, Sprinkler's kind of a mashup of social and email marketing? Is that, uh, 
Is that a very unfair description, or is that kind of in that area? Uh, I would say uh, there's probably a better way to describing it. Uh, what what Springwood does is it allows your existing organizational structure with marketing teams and PR teams and sales teams and customer service teams and product teams. We give you a web-based infrastructure that you can put all these users onto, and they can collaborate and coordinate in managing their external audience. We roll it up into an enterprise view across business units. So if you are Microsoft, or if you are Dell, or if you are Samsung, uh, or if you are General Motors, you begin to see a full picture. So we help you manage social as a channel. Right? My previous company helped help large businesses manage email as a channel to connect. How we do that with social. Um, we do integrate with marketing databases and CRM databases. You want to think of a digital as a hub and spoke. We're a large company doing this right. You want to have a central data warehouse of all your communication and your uh, database of audience. Then you want to have a channel database for email. You know, that could be Epsilon, that could be Experian, that could be responses. And then you need to have a social data warehouse, and that should be sprinkler because we're building that for you. And then you need to have a, you know, a database for your web, you should need to have a database for your direct mail, and you need to pull all those together into your central data warehouse where you're creating a 360 degree view. So we help you get a 360 degree view across your social channel. But you've got to start pulling it back. And we own social as a channel for our clients. We help them manage that and adapt their existing infrastructure to the new world. Yeah, I guess in that case, let me throw in a quick question to, to, help, to, help, to help me and maybe some of our listeners clearly understand that. Who would you say then? Uh, today, it, that is Springer competing with uh, in, in this enterprise space you're in? Who, who would that be? Right, so I'm going to, the lay of the land, uh, I'm going to give you a slightly convoluted answer. The lay of the land as we see it in the space, there are three kinds of companies, and they're, they're not three distinct sets of companies because they're all moving towards each other. The first cluster that you want to, you probably will see, is the first generation of social media technology, which is listening. So you have companies with either interface like Radio Six, the system of the same thing that the old school company. That used to be a very crowded marketplace. And when there is a through M and A a dwindle down and, 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 and there's a top view. But there's another cluster of companies whose legacy is in building Facebook applications. And you know these are companies like Buddy Media or Vid Group or Context Option or Involver. And there's a third group of companies that have started their life as being engagement management companies. And we are one of those companies. So we are, I'd say, in the evolutionary uh, scheme of things, we're probably the last set of that evolution. And what, where Springwood fits is we're focused on very large companies. And we're focused on listening, apps, and engagement, and social governance. So in that regard, um, we compete with all the companies I mentioned, but at the same time, we have a unique value proposition in that we're not solving a community manager's problem alone. We're solving a brand's problem. We're solving Cisco's problem. We're solving Microsoft's problem. We're solving Target's problem, not a PR manager at target problem, or a social community manager at target problem alone. We solve them, the value we bring is we roll it up into an infrastructure that a large company can then use to build social out as a can. So uh, a couple of years ago, I did a uh, an interview with the uh, head of a company called uh, Social, F uh, social Funnel. Um, and what they did was they allowed for the organization to determine when a when a question came in who was going to answer it. It was sort of managing, 
you know, rather than one person trying to do all this or try to deal with it by, by email, uh, it was all coordinated through this interface. Is that what Sprinkler does? Is that a part of what Sprinkler does? And I, I know when we spoke before, you sort of characterized this as a second generation of this social media management type of a, a, a utility. Um, that is a part of what Spindler does. And again, if you look at the way the market has evolved, there are a whole bunch of solutions that solve specific problems within social media. For example, Disney does a phenomenal job of link shortening, right? This, there's a company out in Canada that does a phenomenal job of following people back on Twitter. Um, there's another company that does a job of managing customer service on Facebook. Now, here is the problem. For a second, I want you to think that you are the head of social media for any one of our large clients. Do you want your 100 people logging on to 50 or 75 different products? You're already managing. I did an audit for one of our clients. They found out that they owned 800 Twitter accounts. They were unable to identify the owners within the company for 400 of them. Wow. So when they got started with us, they were sending around passwords in an Excel spreadsheet. Now let me ask you a question. When you go to your Facebook page and you see you're a retailer and you see 5 million fans there, wouldn't you agree with me that these are five million of your best customers? People who care enough to see your coupon in their Facebook screen. I want you to visualize five million of your best people standing out together in an auditorium or outside of the ball or whatever. And when they got started with us, the specific retailer I'm thinking, one of the top five retailers in the country. There were spam, porn, and people asking others to boycott this retailer that was showing up on their wall. So you can't say, well, I'm going to give you 20 different tools because you have to respond to the consumer. And the consumer doesn't differentiate between, you know, go to a different place to, to complain and go to a different place to point out uh, uh, HR issues, all co-mingled. So you need a framework like we provide, where publishers, roles, hierarchy, and visibility is controlled, that can, that you can then layer in the other two. We have our own link shortening. But if you are already a busy customer, you want to use them, you can plug in into our framework and they continue to use them. So we provide that framework that you can put these plug and play solutions. It's, it's, it's interesting that, uh, Raji. Uh, I think what's probably into my mind listening to how you're describing uh, Sprinkler is thinking, okay, this is not like email marketing, obviously. Um, it, it seems to me that you're in a similar area to what I would understand, certainly, is the space that companies like salesforce.com would claim is their enterprise space, now, particularly since their acquisition of Radiant 6. Or Adobe, since they launched Adobe Social Analytics, I went to the, one of the European launch events recently, uh, and some of the things you've mentioned, they do the same. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, you're, you're in a space that looking at, um, uh, I suppose you could call them trend proofing. What's, what's important to, to enterprises, big corporations with this massive data? And that example you gave of people's behaviors and how they deal with passwords and stuff, that huge change is coming in these enterprises. So, you know, what those other guys that I've mentioned are, are, are doing, and what I'm seeing, certainly some of the companies I talk to, is some of the things you're describing. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, this is a very competitive market area. It's beginning to consolidate. So what would you say to, uh, to, uh, to someone in an organization who... Is, is, you know, a salesforce.com organization, suddenly you come knocking on the door. Why would they want to talk to you if they, if they think they're already getting all of this stuff from salesforce.com? Well, let me give you some statistics about Sprinkler. The first thing you need to do know is that we have no, we do no outbound market, very limited. Like, you don't really have a marketing team. 
In fact, we're just building out our sales team. So this company has to focus on sales and marketing till now. For companies that have no focus on sales and marketing right now, it's a startup in a very competitive market where your competitors are advertising and effort. You think they'd be struggling, right? On the contrary, this week we're onboarding five multi-billion dollar clients on the platform. There are 2,300 companies who have found us on our website, which by my own admission, I'm embarrassed about my website. They find us and they come to the website and they sign up and say, please contact me. I'm interested in being on the invite list for when you make the platform accessible to them. And it blew me away. Remember, this is my third startup, right? We're used to doing outbound marketing and sales. What's happening is the power of social media. I just had, we did one of the clients were onboarding this week. And I asked them, you can ask clients, how do you find them? It's all through referral. He said to me, well, I talked to this other brand, and the key, the head of social media said, we are the company that they could use. So he picked up the phone, signs up, reaches us, we respond. A week later, we're now in the group. What sales force and what everyone is preaching is this. The world is going to be different. Your clients are going to trust others like them more than what you put out on your website, what you put in your white paper, what you say at your trade show. We are a living testimony of that. So everyone can say everything they want. We know we're living proof that we're closer to the destination. And the vision that we are painting of the future is resonating with the marketplace. We're solving real operational problems. We're solving real reporting problems. We're solving real governance problems. We have thousands of years. This company has grown 10 times from January to November. And X. We hired like 30 people the last six weeks. Oh. These are crazy statistics, but it's the power of what we're saying and a manifestation of, of what's happening. So, I mean, everyone talks the same game. I think the truth is in execution and what you're doing. And we're, we're happy with, with where we are. Yeah, we talk a lot about this notion of social business. Uh, a lot of people are for about the last year or so have been making this distinction between social media and social business. And part of it, and this was identified in an Altimeter Group report on social media preparedness, is, is the integration of what you're doing out in these social channels with more downstream activities. So you've heard something, have you started to factor what you've heard into your product planning, uh, for example? Uh, does Sprinkler provide the ability to take the information and start to integrate it into other business processes? Uh, we do. So we have clients where you know they've onboarded um, their customer service team on Sprinkler that is using the this email. So there is uh, integration where the ticket number can be put into Sprinkler and exposed out to connect back, connect the dots, or tweet it out so that the consumer calling in can reference the ticket number when they call into the call center. Um, we do, uh, we're creating a universal profile and one of our more mature clients, we, the project that we did last month was a social data event. We've been blessed because we're working with some of the most socially mature companies in America today. Companies like uh, Dell Computers or Nike uh, or Cisco Systems really been pushing the envelope, right? So I can't talk too much about the specifics of what they do, but I'll tell you, um, they are way more advanced than what mainstream media uh, wants everyone to believe uh, in terms of social media maturity. Let me ask you a question, Raji. Uh, something you mentioned earlier, social governance. Uh, it's not a term I'm familiar with a lot. So maybe you could just outline a bit more about what is exactly social governance. Right. So, 
every brand, every touch point, every account that you have on a LinkedIn or YouTube or Twitter or Facebook, it's a touch point. It's an outlet that the brand is representing itself on. The real people, your engaged customers, the best customers. No one in their right mind who's in a marketing organization would let, you know, you put out a screwed up logo in a newspaper ad, right? Or pronounce your name wrong on a, on a radio commercial or a TV commercial. Yet, in social media, like I said, you have hundreds of accounts, but there is no control of who's accessing them. There are in large companies, visualized multi-billion dollar companies with we work with companies that are that are using Springer in 50, 60, 70 businesses in 60 countries. There's one rollout that we're doing to 52 countries. There's another one where they're saying they're in 120, they're starting with a smaller number. Imagine a product manager going, I need to get some feedback, I'm gonna open a Twitter account. Taking a random logo, putting it up there, and then not using it. From a consumer perspective, you're getting a very dysfunctional experience of that brand. And the executive team and the enterprise need to address that. We need to put controls in place so you can open an account or a channel. How should it be re represented? What are the rules? Should you shut down a Facebook page if it's under 500 users? What should you do? Do you have a responsibility to respond to message? All those, when I put a message out, how does an enterprise get, get its brand messaging or global campaign distributed among 10 to 20, 100 people? All that fall in the purview of what Sprinkler counts as social counts. Well, we are using uh, Hangouts with Extras for the first time, uh, and this has the uh, option of sharing the screen, which I haven't seen on a Hangout before, and I can't imagine a better opportunity. Would you uh, be willing to show us the interface of uh, Sprinkler? Yeah, yeah, we haven't put out any public demonstration, so I'm going to be very, very brief. That's fine. What, I, what I'll show you is our I'll show you uh, uh, handful of screens to, to give you a quick flavor what we do. Sure. And it is a very visual uh, concept, so I think seeing some uh, some of the primary screens might help everybody understand exactly what we've been talking about. Absolutely. Cool. Now, your picture came up. <laughs> so, imagine looking at Ross. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Yeah. Imagine, visualize, first off, I want you to visualize every group having their own workspace. So, try... Uh, if uh, Germany and UK and France and Europe having their own workspace, if you're a brand that's split geographically, imagine having the administrators in each country who can bring on their game and manage their world. Imagine someone in Europe being able to administer those three countries and the person in, in global headquarters uh, being able to manage around copies of the world and being able to jump into a country. Imagine each one of those being able to add um, scores and scores of their uh, Imagine the platform being able to mine through them. And if you, you know, go on the Twitter management tool, if you go on Facebook as a Facebook management tool, if you go on YouTube as a YouTube management tool, picking up all the messages that who needs to be looking at and putting it into an inbox for you and being able to look up people in a 360 degree context of who they are, being able to see what I can pull up to you, Cal. I can pull up a ton of things. <laughs> Facebook, all your Twitter, where you're LinkedIn, right? I pull the picture of now I want to see a 360-degree view of your engagement with my brand, which is Sprinkler. Notice how I pulled up ad with my brand. And now, for me to be able to say, you know what, um, to respond to this message, pick another message here. 
I want to respond to this message like it's like, let me drag my projection up. It might be the tank top. But just let me drag and drop me to Because I'm the person and being able to pick it to um, a predefined temple. Be for an unknown bright person. For me to be able to, and I'm going to assign it to another person in my organization, or assign it to a message view that the customer loves the advanced sounds of being able to identify. The in and the credit stuff, all of our stuff. Being able to um, get a notice of what is going on. I think the screen casting and making it slower on my end. But uh, being able to find it. Um, you won't see my screen like you do something, but I'm going to keep here to do it. Uh, um, Give us a good sense of it. I'm, I'm just uh, going into it as being able to create your own dashboard, right? Look at Pro. Uh, um, you can look, look across activity, you can look at engagement, you can look, look across uh, grief, and you can see all that and choose a visualization you want to see. So being able to literally correlate what you're doing with what the response is, and being able to figure out what's going on within a campaign, and what keywords are the causing your followers to repeat something? All those are things you can do within Sprint. I'm not going to go, I mean, the screen cast is doing something on the computer. So I'm going to keep you here, but hopefully you got the idea. You, you can interact with, with, each, with the data you're seeing on screen, Raj. You can interact with those data points, can you? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Interact, expose, share, and there is. Um, there is, um, um, you know, when you're listening, there are multiple ways to listen. There's an inbox view. There are um, dashboard views where you can see things happen, you know, in real time. They're blinking on Facebook or Twitter and uh, Foursquare and then be able to manage it, share this across a bunch of uh, different uh, team members and escalate stuff and track that through. There's audience outreach. Um, there is content management, there is automation, there's rules you can set up. Um, I wish we had, a, we had a better way to do this because when I started sharing my screen, it just started to create it on the computer. I, I think we've got a good, a good sense of what you're offering. It, it looked, uh, you're getting a good idea, I think, of what's going on. There, so. Let me just add one more thing, right? And where Sprinkler has differentiated ourselves from a technology perspective is we do a lot of things in the UI, but the magic of Sprinkler is largely behind the scenes. We've got PhDs with 25, 30 years of artificial intelligence experience loading up natural language processing algorithms. So as we get these messages, we're color coding the messages positive, negative, what's the intent, is this a question? Color coding the audience, is this guy influential, is this guy engaged with you, is this guy a spammer? And use this information to help the community manager figure out which of their message to respond to first. So we manage a trade show for one of our clients, where we process 27,000 messages. And they contracted with Sprinkler to do the event management on social media. Three people on our end processed 27,000 messages and responded to about 2,000 that was queued out. 
the real time, we were identifying questions and of length. So you said, what is the ne next session, right? When, what time is the best leaving from the hotel? That was in real time picked up by the natural language processing engine. And if there was a temperature response, we were sending it out. And if it wasn't there, we were um, escalating it to our appropriate contact at the location or back in headquarters for the, for the company. Very good. All right, and, and yeah, I, I have to say I was pretty impressed when you gave me the tour earlier with that free service for screen sharing. I can't remember what it was called, but that was pretty nifty too. So. Right, yeah. right. It's called and give a, 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 a shout out. Uh, it's a company called Join.me. And it's That's an unbelievable it. job. Yep. Okay, well, Raji, thanks very much for your time. Uh, we appreciate it. I'm sure uh, our uh, audience is going to be fascinated to hear about this product. I got one final question, just just while we're, we're finalizing. Where do people go if they want to find out information about Springfield? <laughs> you know, this is, this is the part where I get embarrassed, okay? We, that we, great we, website you mentioned? <laughs> yeah, the website we mentioned, but we suck at a lot of these communication marketing things at the moment. We're taking big steps to address those. So be fair with us if the website doesn't do justice to what we do or who our clients are, we're addressing those. Um, best way to, there's information on the website. The company's name is Sprinkler. So you go to sprinkler.com. It's like a long sprinkler without the E. So S-P-R-I-N-K-L-R.com. Um, the best way to get in touch is to use the contact us. Um, and then reach out to someone on our end. Great. Well, Raji, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Best of luck with uh, yeah. the product. It sounds like uh, you're off to a fantastic start with some of the clients that you've uh, signed on board. Thanks, Raji. Thank you very much for the opportunity. You will have a great afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah, See you.